¿Qué significa utopía? El significado en sí no lo sé. De Cuba. Aquí ah. hacíamos el azúcar de la Coca-Cola, la qué? refinería mejor de la América. ¿Y ahora qué? Nada. Que es un imperio y apoderarse, pero Cuba no dejó porque lo controlara. Así creando las historias, uno va creando la realidad. Pero quien hace su historia lo dice a su conveniencia. Bueno, nunca está ni el mismo pueblo de los Estados Unidos, está a favor a veces de las cosas y las políticas que pasan ahí. El gobierno. Hacer una historia de que el mundo es malo y que ellos son los buenos. Tratamos de sobrevivir ante la locura. Somos la batalla de la revolución. Abajo el imperialismo, arriba la libertad. ¡Arriba fuerte! Hubert, good morning from Las Vegas, and I'm. I How are you? Is it evening for you? Where are you at right now? Uh, it's uh, no, it's it's four four thirty in the afternoon in Paris. I'm in Paris. This is my little place. You can see the roofs of Paris. Wonderful. I've been uh, there. I've been there once. It was just a great experience. This is. Look at you. This is like my tiny, Canadian. tiny. I love it. <laughs> the artwork of. Uh, Mexican friend who's a great Mexican painter, Uncle Knight. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for talking to me today about Epicentro. How are you doing? I'm happy to talk to you. Wonderful. Have you, have you, have you, do you know all my work or do you know my other films? Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. So I was very excited to watch this and it was just, I have a fascination with Cuba and visiting there someday. And this was such a great portrait. Uh, you know, personally and politically, it was it was just a wonderful film. I really, I was at Sundance earlier this year too, and I, I'm sorry I missed it. Well, um, here we are. I can see you. <laughs> wonderful. Okay. Well, let's let's talk about the film. <laughs> well, let's. Uh, you encourage the you encourage the viewer to go deeper at the beginning of the film. Can you elaborate on that? Well, the beginning of Epicentro is 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 uh, has a style that is not necessarily the style of the film. It's it's kind of a. Um, um, slowly sinking in it's like hypnotic uh long traveling in the middle of the night so it's not very useful usual that documentaries or movies in general open in the middle of the night in a place where you don't know what's going on and what it's going to be about but i think the word go deeper means uh you know go go into yourself and and be ready for a journey which is uh which is a uh, you know a contract between a viewer and the movie uh, that you go on a, on a journey together and uh, and uh, go deeper means also uh, just let let the film sink in and uh, and uh, let yourself be be surprised by what's coming um, well, I guess this is the explanation uh, before that tell me about choosing your first image of the documentary it's a man smoking a cigar by the sea that was the very first image you used in the film that was essentially when I started to film the end of the world, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, what, <laughs> it's a big cliche, but, uh, uh, when I, when I filmed for, for almost three years in, in Havana, every once in a while, uh, mm. this, uh, hurricane hits the Caribbean as everyone knows. And especially in Havana, there's this long coastline where with, uh, with big walls that, that, protect the old city of Havana and the port. And when the hurricane hits these, uh, these walls, it, it's literally is like a, like a bomb blows up every time. And what is very specific is that this uh, coast uh, promenade is it's called Le Malicon, uh, I think it's known. Uh, it's also lit up by, by street lights. So in a very weird way, you've got this like Hollywood lighting and and like hell breaking loose at the same time in, in this beautiful light in this old city. And metaphorically, of course, uh, and for the, for, the, for the Cubans who have the tendency to blame almost everything on, on, on you guys, Americans, um, 
even the hurricanes and the waves that hit the old city uh, are often blamed on, in this case, on Trump because, uh, you know, it's, it's connected to global warming. And so, so it's, <laughs> it's just one more layer uh, that I didn't, I didn't elaborate in the movie, but there, it was kind of funny that uh, uh, old Havana is, is flooded and everyone says, yeah, it's the gringos fault. <laughs> it's kind oh. of funny but 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 in, but made of, but in a way it's a bit a bit true too but uh, you know i wouldn't go as far as, uh, as using this in a movie well i love so, that so and and this and this, and this opening shot is is also the closing shot so i say i love how you use the young people of havana uh for a, a central part of your documentary and it's amazing how the children are instructed of foreign interference and slavery and the plan amendment but it, it uses film and media in a, like a, a propaganda tool. And the school kids are watching their first films, the like Lumiere's Trip to the Moon, The Kiss, Arrival of a Train, and then it cuts to a firing squad. It just kind of lures them in. And then all of a sudden they're, they're taken aback, they're shocked. Yeah, well, the interesting thing for in, in history of cinema is that, uh, of course, the French claim having invented cinema, whereas the, Americans claim having invented running pictures, both is true. Uh, only the French Méliès and Lumière brothers uh, for the first years used cinema as, as like this uh, magic, um, mystical uh, attraction. It's almost like this circus attraction. It is like hypnotizing people and fascinating people. The, the train coming and everyone knows these first pictures of, of running images. And only three years later, in geopolitics came this pivoting point with the explosion of the main uh, that changed world history. But the truth is that the explosion of the main alone did not change world history. The perception of it did change world history. And the perception of it was re reconstructed in New York in a bathtub. So the explosion of the main, naval battles, uh, executions of the evil Spaniards uh, shooting poor Cubans led to the outcry of uh, Cuba Libre and Cuba Libre led to the Spanish-American War and the Spanish-American War was the first American interventionist war which led to the first U.S. flag overseas in, in, in precisely in Guantanamo. By the way, it's the reason why Guantanamo is never going to be given up by, by, um, by Washington, I, I presume. But uh, so, so the, the American empire was birth, born in a bathtub in New York um, Pretending to be, uh, <laughs> to pretending to be, Cuba, and uh, so so the interesting thing is that history is not what happens, but what is told about and how it is portrayed and how it is talked about and how is it shown, and since exactly since the explosion of the main, uh, history is is not only talked about and narrated and painted, but it it is it is. Uh, communicated in a, a be there experience, which is called cinema. And, and uh, in, in 1898, cinema didn't exist. Uh, it was just, uh, you know, one minute long films that, that are, you know, as, as, as we know, uh, very, uh, very uh, crew, rough and, uh, and not very sharp, uh, clear and uh, black and white and very mysterious. So these were the first, images that Americans have ever seen, uh, the images that move, where uh, was the Spanish-American War? Well, as, as a young- In reconstruction, uh, and, 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 in, and not, not the real Spanish-American War, it was like the, the remake or the, the, the like actors, uh, like playing uh, executions, uh, saying, well, blaming it on, on the Spaniards, etc. And, and gunboats and uh, naval battles, the Battle of Santiago de Cuba was remade in a, in a bathtub in New York and the cameraman of Edison and uh, well, other producers uh, uh, sh shot these images, which are still today seen as archives from the Spanish-American War uh, with smoke from cigars and little firecrackers. It, it's really fascinating. It was, it's the beginning of, 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 it was the beginning of uh, special effects. It was the beginning of Hollywood and de facto the beginning of, of America as an empire. Yeah. Well, as a European filmmaker, when shooting in places like Cuba, did they give you the freedom to tell your story? And I assume that came with some responsibility as well. <laughs> well, you know, uh, as a filmmaker, you have huge responsibility, but it's of course impossible to kind of live up to it all the time. You know, you can, 
you can make a film about human rights against torture and that very f movie can inspire a film how to torture uh, somewhere in the Congo. So there's no way as a filmmaker that you control the, uh, the, the so-called message you send out. You can only hope it, it is, uh, it is uh, you know, arriving in, in the sense that you, that you kind of meant it. Uh, so the, the crazy thing is that cinema uh, and, and, and uh, everything that is mass communication is just, as soon as it's out, it's also out of control. So, you know, the, 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 the guys who made to reproduce the Spanish American war and, and as models, they didn't necessarily think at that moment uh, that they might trigger a war that would lead to uh, uh, a countless other wars that would lead to uh, Afghanistan and, and Iraq and, and Vietnam, which, which it did, but it wasn't, you cannot blame it on the cameraman in 1898, you know. Um, they, they were, you know, just trying to get the, the, the cigar smoke straight. <laughs> well, I was fascinated by, you know, one of the Cuban women in your documentary, she wanted to visit Disneyland, such a simple dream. But she denounces imperialism, but the desire for America and the American dream, it's always such a conflict, I noticed throughout the documentary, that the Cuban people were, were uh, being indoctrinated, you know, with their propaganda from their own government, but then all of a sudden in the same sentence, they're like praising America too. So it was just kind of, kind of interesting in that respect. Well, it's, it looks like a paradox, but it's, it's, it's essentially the same, you know? This woman says imperialism is 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 a disgrace, which is the echo of of the Cuban propaganda. Uh, and she also says she wants to see Mickey Mouse for real, which is the outcome of American propaganda. You know, which is not called propaganda in America. It's called PR. It's called publicity. It's called uh, uh, communication. I don't know what, but. Uh, the, the de facto she she say, she just uh, is deeply influenced by two similar waves of of, of uh, 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 brain alternation. I mean, how does somebody want to see Mickey Mouse for real? It's that's insane, you know. But it is a, it is a dream. It is part of the what what is called the American dream to go to Disneyland where everything shines, as she said, and where there's many lights. And she's standing in the in a dark street. And, uh, and waiting for a client to to pay her for a night, you know, it sounds it sounds like a, it sounds like a it sounds like a paradox, but it's 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 it is it is the same of uh, essentially the same. Yeah, she's just <laughs> echoing two two huge influences. Yeah, and I, I know the the lifeblood of Cuba is tourism, but there was this one gentleman in your documentary that did this anti-tourism rant. I thought was fascinating because you know. It also comes from our state of Hawaii. Hawaiians are the same way about anti-tourism, you know. So I, I felt that, I, you know, because as someone who wants yeah. to visit Cuba, I was fascinated by someone saying we don't want foreigners here, even for tourism. But I think it's it's always a question of measure, you know. Uh, you don't want to drown in a what in a tsunami. It doesn't mean you're anti-water because you need to drink water. <laughs> so it's like always, it's all a question of measure. And what is what is at stake is just that uh, tourism in 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 such masses, such mass tourism, which is a global phenomenon, which is a global uh, like um, uh, pathology, I would say, is very destructive. And it, it is it is uh, mass tourism is essentially a six like the a succession of of, of colonialism that, because the, the 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 African beautiful virgin beaches are colonized by Europeans who run there uh, naked um, and uh, just two generations ago the grandfathers of the same Europeans would colonize Senegal uh, and it's essentially not very different you know it's just taking what you can take uh, and and so it's the same dialectic is, is, is in America and uh, the same is uh, you know the Japanese go to Indonesia to to take what they can take and, and you and that's, uh... <laughs> that's that's an old game. And you end your documentary with the mafia and, and their hotel. And as, as an American, I know it well from Godfather part two. I mean, I always equate Cuban revolution with the end of the Godfather. That's how most Americans would probably know in pop culture. Yeah, well, I, I, I was not with the mafia, but I was with the, with the 
with the kids uh, who are the stars in Epicentro in the Mafia hotels. Uh, they got to swim what too, is, right? What is again, uh, right. And, and that's interesting, as you said before, uh, why do the kids in Old Havana absolutely want to go swim in, in, a, in a luxury pool? Uh, from uh, in a hotel which was made by the mafia is that the mafia was uh, also shaping and and reproducing the american dream uh, which is uh, luxurious beaches and pools and dancing girls and music and rum and cigars and 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 uh, and, and party and and pools and the kids of old havana who live just next door can never access to these pools and so of course they see it on TV, they see swimming pools, they see movie stars in Hollywood jumping in pools. <laughs> that's what movie stars do, they hang out in pools, right? And, that's, and that becomes the narrative that, that the kids of Havana, of course, want to reproduce. It's, it's, it's just the same as we said, you said before, it's a meeting, meeting Mickey Mouse, flying in an airplane, uh, zipping on a, on a piña colada with a, with a you know, and the, little, the little girl on top of it. And the little girl from the dance studio, did you end up taking her to dinner at the restaurant? She was so excited about that. Well, the little girl, uh, Leonelli, is the star of my movie, among other uh, kids. And those kids are 10. And of course, they are, quote unquote, my children, because we were hanging out uh, month on end. And their families are my family now. And, uh, and uh, we, we were very connected. Of course, we went. We we. We was having spent a lot of time. Of course, I I, I could kind of provide sometimes uh, for these kids to have a, to have access to the world which they wouldn't have had. Which is a scene, by the way, in the film. So in one of the scenes, we do go to this five-star hotel, and the kids are are just overly happy, and they jump in the pool, which is not really allowed for Cuban kids. But we pretended to be Americans, and uh, I talked to to the doorman in English, and the kids would just learn two phrases: say, "Hey, Daddy, I want an ice cream," and then we got past. It was a it was a hoax, and uh, and then one of the kids ends up pissing in the pool and says, "I just pissed in the pool," which is a one of the best scenes in the film. <laughs> Everyone does it. <laughs> uh, it was it was uh, yeah. Well, I I didn't piss in that pool, but well, when you're a child, it was just I. I <laughs> I guess I did, yeah. Um, so, uh, and it's like in the context of the movie is that this is the pool of, of kind of people who are so much richer. It was a hotel that come, comes from this mafia tradition, and then the kid with a big smile said, "I just pissed in it." It's just this this fantastic moment, you know. And it's and it's 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 hard to explain in a radio interview. Uh, I mean, maybe you should want to show the clip, but. Uh, it, it is just uh, one of these things where cinema, I think, is, is at its best. You know, you, you can show something that is that is in itself completely random, but in the story of the movie, it's like a firecracker. It's just like an explosion, and and, you, and people just break down in, in the cinema when they see it. I loved it. I loved it. Such a great moment. So, Sorry. well, Hubert, thank you so much for talking yeah. to me today. What a fascinating film! Uh, it, it's a snapshot of a politics, propaganda, culture, and uh, I, I really want to visit Cuba someday. And, and just, I love how you showcase the people because they just seem like the most generous, friendly people around. They, they are, I, and the film is dedicated to them. And I hope you can see uh, Epicentro in a, in a, on a big screen. And on your show, I hope you can see, show some show some clips of it. Absolutely, I will. Thank I you so much for talking to me, Hubert, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you.